So what we've got here is uh, a two-dollar battery. I mean, this is a bad battery and um, wasn't starting a car anymore. I figure, let's just see if there's a possibility of us being able to get it back to life. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. First thing is, um, I'm going to take the caps off. And even if it's a maintenance-free battery, sometimes the maintenance-free batteries have a, a sticker over the top, so it doesn't look like you can get into the caps. But in this case, they don't have a sticker, so I know that if I have a small screwdriver, I'll be able to pry this thing up. And I look in, I just want to look in the holes, and it's still got liquid. So that's good. That's the first shot at it. I'm being very careful not to let anything fall in. I'm going to put this cap back on. Okay, and then I'm going to open the other cap to make sure the same thing. So one of the things that happens to batteries when they get older, obviously, is some of the electrolyte comes out. And if they, the water level gets below the caps, I mean, below the, the plates, um, the battery get, will get hurt. But this has still got electrolyte over the top of the plate, so I'm not going to mess with that. I, if, if I do recover this battery, I will put more electrolyte in. And I, there's two types of um, electrolyte. There's distilled water. Uh, when a battery's just a little bit low, distilled water is the only thing to use. However, you can buy electrolyte, which is pre-mixed sulfuric acid in water. And I like that stuff. You can buy it at an auto parts place. Um, it's the right pH. And so if I'm adding any batteries where I can see the plates, I always, I always put that in electrolyte in um, instead of just water. So, okay. All right, so the first thing is we tested liquid and we've got liquid and we've got these now, let me also, um, this is sulfuric acid. You've got to be very careful. Um, I've got shirts with holes in them. I call them my holy shirts because it's, it can be, you know, around the edges and stuff. And that stuff's corrosive. It's dangerous. Probably should be wearing goggles. I probably should have goggles on and stuff. So I advise you to wear goggles if you're touching anything that has sulfuric acid. Okay, so that's the beginning. Okay, so... My, my first test is to see how, what kind of voltage it has in it. Now, this battery is from 09. Um, we're talking about a 14 year old battery and it's not an expensive battery. So the, the odds of this working are pretty slim, but there's different things, techniques that I can do. The first technique is to take our charger maintainer with our tester and see if we read any voltage at all. Now, uh, when a battery is old or has been let go uh, for a while, let's say it's been uh, out of a car for six months or so, um, it will always hold the voltage because chemically after a battery, even a battery that won't start a car chemically, there's always eight or nine volts left in it. When a battery gets down to zero, that's because it's this battery's probably been sitting for years and years and years. And so they're very difficult to get the charge. Now, if we can register anything on here, I can I can bring it back from two, down as low as two volts, but let's just see if this thing registers anything at all. I don't think it will. And I'm right, it's not registering anything. Okay, so at this point in time, if I plug this in, it's not gonna charge it because it doesn't see that there's even a battery there. And smart chargers like ours uh, look for that. Um, as a matter of fact, the reason we look for some voltage is otherwise they'd spark like the old fashioned chargers or normal chargers. They'll spark when you touch the leads. We don't want that. We want it to be safe. So we look for at least a couple of volts. This is showing nothing. So my next thing that I'm going to do to see if I can recover this is I'm going to grab another 12 volt battery and I'm going to put it in parallel. What parallel is red to red black to black. So that's the next thing I'll do. And then I'm just gonna let them set together. Um, and I'm gonna hope that there's a possibility that if this isn't totally sulfated, that this will start bringing the voltage up a little bit. And um, if I can get it up a few volts to the point where the charger will start charging it, then we can go for the second 
thing, and that is let's we'll charge it up. And then, of course, the third test is will it hold the charge? That's I'm skeptical on that with this battery, but you know what? We'll give it a shot. You know, so um, that's, that'll be the next test. So, okay. So what I'm going to do now is connect up the old battery to the new battery, the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. I'm careful not to short out the leads and stuff. Okay, here we go. And so we'll go here to the positive of the old battery and then to the positive of the new battery. And then we'll take the, our box and make sure that we've got voltage across there. And there we are. Okay, and we got 12.9 at the connectors, which is good. And so we're just gonna leave this like this now for a while. We're gonna let, we're gonna, what we're hoping for now is that this battery allows this old 13, 14 year old battery, 14 year old battery, um, to absorb some energy. And, um, and if we can get that, that voltage up a few volts, then we have, then, then our pulse charger will start pulsing it. Now, the, the, how a pulse charger works at this point in time is it puts out an ultrasonic pulse, so it's gonna try to dislodge the sulfur from the lead plates and put it back in suspension in the sulfuric acid where it belongs, not stuck to the lead plates. And so when a battery goes dead, most of the sulfur is over there next to the lead. When you charge it back up again, the sulfur moves back into liquid and that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to leave that for probably uh, oh, a couple hours and let it just uh, absorb. Okay, so now we've had these connected for a couple hours and um, the charger is charging. So the first thing that you do after it's been on for a while like this is you remove the second battery. And um, you can notice that it's still taking 0.6 amps. So the battery has recovered somewhat already. Um, it's, it's, um, it's taking a charge, which is good. It's slow, but we wouldn't expect it to start taking a real strong charge yet because it's very sulfated. So I am going to remove this cable and this other battery, and now it's on its own. I'm going to let it be on its own. And that's the next stage. So when I come back, don't have all this removed. Okay, so we've um, removed the other battery. This battery is continuing to go up slowly. Um, we're putting 12.9 volts into it right now. We're putting a little bit more than half an amp in it. It's not taking the charge fast yet, but that's because the pulsing hasn't removed um, all the sulfur that it needs to remove for the battery to go up. So at this point in time, this is actually pretty interesting. This looks pretty good. Um, we're getting it to take a charge. A 14 year old battery has been sitting for years and years. Um, and we will probably be able to charge it up all the way. Whether that means it can be used for anything useful other than maybe a, you know, a workbench, um, battery or something. I don't, I'm not sure of yet, but what we'll do after we get this going, I'm going to leave this on about four days because um, it's going to take at least four days to pulse and try to desulfate uh, the plates. But, so we'll leave it on for about four days and then we'll come back and then we will do a test on it and stuff. Now the charger, when the battery gets to capacity, it doesn't mean it's going to hold the charge, but when it gets to capacity, that full light right there will turn green. And when it turns green, at that point in time, what we're saying is, okay, we've done the best we could. Now, after it turns green, that might happen tonight or tomorrow, um, doesn't mean it's desulfated all the way. That takes more time. It's got to go through the routine more. So it's kind of like when you're desulfating, it's an ultrasonic cleaner. It's kind of like a jewelry cleaner. And we, we got a, you know, a piece of jewelry inside this thing. And, and the plates are vibrating. We're trying to get the sulfur off. That's kind of how we're cleaning the plates. Um, so it's going to take some time. But anyway, I, I think it's worthy of getting three or four days worth of uh, pulsing. And then we're going to find out where we stand. And uh, who knows, we might be able to bring a 14-year-old battery back to life. It would be, would be great. 
Okay, so we're still working on this. It's been a day, but we're, um, we're at 14.1. We're putting 1.8 amps into it, so it's still trying to do a bulk charge and desulfation. Um, but this battery is actually doing better than I thought. Now, I'm still not, we won't know until that full light comes on, which will probably take another day or two of desulfation and stuff. Um, how, you know, we won't know how, how many uh, cold cranky amps it's still got in it. It was rated at 525. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it's at. But we did bring it back from dead to, to be honest with you, way better than I thought we would do. Um, because this, this, you know, I mean, it looks like it's been pretty well trashed. And somebody really hit it hard with something but, and broke the handle. So who knows what fell on it. But um, it, it's going to be fun to see how far we can get and if we can actually make it something useful. Uh, if it's got 100 or 200 cold crank amps when we get done, it'd be a great workbench. Uh, not that we need a workbench uh, stuff because these are all testing batteries but it would it might we might put it somewhere and use it as a workbench battery and stuff so um, we'll see anyway okay it's been three days since we've uh, put this on and uh, to my delight we are uh, completely charged up all the way it brought this two dollar battery back to life um, as amazing as that sounds this battery can be used again We'll find out how good it is. I'm sure it's not perfect, of course, because it is 14 years old, but it can be used again. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take the charger off and I am going to put a carbon pile load tester, good old fashioned, cheap little load tester on there and see how strong it is. All right, so I'll do that next. Okay, so I've taken a carbon pile load tester without a load on there, it's, it's in the, uh, a proper range so here's the big deal when i put a load on it here's where it is it's still in the green it's it's a little weak but it would be usable um it would certainly be usable on on uh, any kind of a small vehicle or something like that um doesn't have it's not new but it's 14 years old so from a two dollar dead battery that's been sitting around for years to a battery that can hold the charge it's still in the uh, good and and even with a load on there it's still in the in the low uh, area good that's what pulsing can do to a battery <laughs> 